Coming to you from the University of Minnesota, Rochester, our town. Who runs the world? Well, our guest today would say girls run the world. Manira Alamir joins us to share her experience this past year as the United Nations Girl Up Teen Advisor and as a representative for the Minnesota Youth Council. Welcome. Thank you. Well, quite a year that you've had. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what it's been like to be the teen advisor for the region representing the United Nations? Well, it's been both overwhelming and much more fun than I was expecting it to be. Um, Lots of people would say the fact that I'm working with such a prestigious organization is great. Like, it's impressive on its own, but I think the best part of the job is seeing how many young girls I've gotten to inspire. Like, I have almost a fan club at my local middle school, and they, they talk about how they want to pursue gender equity, and they want to make the world a better place for young girls, and that inspires me a lot. I feel like that is the best part about being a teen advisor. So what sort of things were you doing, or projects were you involved with? What was the goal of this advisory position? Mostly I was helping um, organize the Girl Up organization as a whole. I was helping design new toolkits for incoming clubs and members and everything, but also I was working within my community to see what I could do to make things better for young girls. I was working with a lot of local poets at my high school and helping them design events and things that would, they would help, uh, things that they would be able to carry in the future. You'd be able to get that out though, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I was working at my local high school and helping young poets decide like what they want to do in the future and how they want to cre continue to make Rochester a better place for young women. Okay. And you were also part of the Minnesota Youth Council. So how is that different from what you were doing at the United Nations? I would say it was very different in its focus. Um, it was more about representing youth as a whole and not just young women. And I got to do a lot of really cool things like meeting with my local legislators and um, leading legislative sessions where senators and representatives, representatives came and they present their bills to us. And um, I got to really understand how the lobbying, how lobbying works and how the entire legislative system here in Minnesota works, which was really fun. That's great. You also got to present at the United Nations in New York. Can you tell us a little bit about what that was about? I got to present on gender-based violence um, and around the world, especially concerning young women. Ugh, gosh, I'm gonna have to say that again. I got to present on gender-based violence, and uh, I got to talk on a panel talk, discussing how youth can address gender-based violence here in the U.S. and also around the world. And it was really nice, really, understanding how and what young people can do and sharing that with a lot of people, people who are like experts in their field, people who have not been young people for a really long time. So that was wonderful. It was a really informative experience. So you're passionate about so many different issues and you've worked with a lot of different issues. Are there some things um, specifically that you really want to continue to work toward? I want to see more representation of women, and especially young women in politics, because how are we going to make policies and changes that reflect the needs of young women if we don't in involve them in the decisions that we're making? So I want to, as I go off to college and I continue on with my career, I want to make strides to include more women, and especially young women, in politics. You recently graduated from high school as well as a program at RCTC. What's next for you? I am going to go to Stanford University this fall and I will be studying public policy. That's great. And you got to visit the campus? Yeah, it was beautiful. The trees, the weather. It was a wonderful, it was a wonderful time. Will you be leaving a lot of family here in Rochester? Yeah, I will be. I will be leaving my siblings and my, my parents and my cousins. And it's a big move, but um, I'm excited. I'm very excited. And you've done so much work here locally. Is there something that you'd like to leave behind or some words you'd like to share with other youth like you um, here in your hometown? I'd like to tell them never to give up because there's a lot of things that can be very overwhelming when you're young. And there's this feeling that you cannot make the changes you want to see in the world. But I want to tell you that even if you're able to change one person's heart or if you're able to change one person's mind, that is more than enough. You have done so much to help your community with that. So never give up. Continue pushing forward for a future that you want to be proud to live in. That's beautiful. And in terms of your career, so you're going to go to college and then what is your dream job? Okay, my dream job is working with the World Health Organization to eradicate malaria. And um, I also especially want to work in sub-Saharan Africa to, um, to lobby for women's health. I might become a legislator, I might become a researcher, or I might just become a doctor and work in the field. Well, you've got a lot of different options. You've had this experience with the UN. Is there some other experiences in the last couple of years that have really helped you 
moving forward? Yeah, I would say I worked at Mayo Clinic as one of the mentees, and I got to work in a CT lab and conduct my own research. And I feel like that was really informative. I'm not, I decided that I will not become an engineer because I feel like there's much more I can do for the world, but it, it gave me a lot of skills and a lot of resources that will be very helpful for me going forward into politics. Well, I'm excited to see you um, and what you do in the future, and thank you so much. Thank you, Nicole. It was really fun talking to you. is brought to you in part by the following amazing people and organizations. The Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. And the members of KSMQ Public Television. Thank you. Stay with us. Ranked choice voting is a hot topic as we are in the heat of another election cycle. Advocate Steve Monk joins me to give us his perspective. We drop into the newest, coolest ice cream shop on the block. And did you know Helen Keller spent time in Rochester? We find out more in Our Past History. Coming up first, meet Po Shu Wang, the artist responsible for the new sculpture at the Mayo Civic Center in this week's Our Culture segment. My name is Po Shu Wang. I'm, I work with a team of artists uh, and other professionals uh, rotating team of professionals and uh, I created this sculpture for the Mayo Civic Center. It's inspired by the by the center so it's probably the name is going to be circumference and center contracted together so the circum center. The idea is how the people get draw together into the Civic Center for a communal, uh, to have a communal event, to partake in a communal event. So I take on that idea, but basically it's very literal. I didn't create any concept. The concept is there, but how to use this concept to uh, create an artwork that the people can literally uh, have a first person collaboration. That's the idea. The whole concept of the piece is people already are coming to the Civic Center for events and such and you have people coming in and they always have a, an activity to do and this artwork, the purpose of this artwork is to get people to do an activity that they can collaborate together without even knowing each other, without being here at the same time and they are co-creating continuously an ongoing uh, kind of muse, piece of music. This work acts as a wishing well for anybody to express themselves of whatever they want to say at the moment. They come, they can uh, type into the kiosk upstairs and look down at the sculpture and then their words will turn into music to my ears or everybody's ears. My inspiration always comes from the place and the context of the place. In this case, is the Civic Center, how, how to have a civic activity that we can all partake without consuming, and it will come together over time, as I said, to become a continuous collaboration of friends and foes alike. I come up with the concept, I come up with how the thing should be, like for example I come up with the idea of how to convert the words into music with the, with the kind of musical logic which is very simple and every letter you type in it turns into braille in the software. The braille have dots and then all the letter sequence is actually composing all the notes onto a musical style. So as you type, depending on what you say, you, you're composing immediately a piece of music for other people, and then another person will come in and say what they want to say and continue the composition. It's like a um, modern day wishing well that the community can, uh, can come together and show in their thoughts and feelings. I've been able to get the interactive spirit and the arch itself, the arch and the gateway 
kind of effect to have people come together and fulfill the civic center function, which is how we have a civic activity without agreeing even, and still be harmonious. It doesn't matter what you say, it's not about the meaning, it's about a deeper meaning that we all have, that we all share, I think. That I'm happy that I could do it here. For more information about this story and other Our Town features, connect with us on Facebook, Twitter at KSMQ hashtag Our Town, or ksmq.org slash Our Town. If I am free, you must be far. Find the fish, you're the ocean, cause there's something that you need. If I'm the actor, you're the camera, you're the color. On today's Our Town Rundown, we have books and beer. Sounds like an enlightened combination. Check out Books on Tap every second Tuesday of the month. This group gets together to talk about their recent favorites or not so favorite reads at 7 p.m. at Forager's Brewery. And at the end of the night, you have the chance to trade books with other group members. Sounds like a fun way to expand your horizons. More information at foragerbrewery.com. And on display now through September 21st, explore a state-of-the-art exhibit about genomic science, Genome, Unlocking Life's Code at the Rochester Art Center. Genome begins to unravel the mystery behind the complete set of instructions needed for every living thing on Earth, plus some really spectacular art. rochestercenter.org has all the details. Thinking of becoming green? You might want to check out the green pilgrimage offered by Assisi Heights Spirituality Center on July 11th at 6.30 p.m. This environmental pilgrimage on foot takes you through the Temple of Nature. They will discuss the history of the land, conservation practices of the prairie, solar panels, and other environmental issues. Pre-registration saves you five bucks. Details at rochesterfranciscan.org. And of course, in case you haven't noticed, and really, who couldn't, it is summer, and that means Thursdays on 1st and 3rd is in full swing. Food, music, crafts, and all your friends hanging out and enjoying life in Rochester. Don't miss it, 11 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. every Thursday night, right here, downtown. So much to do, so little time. Coming up next, a new cool spot for ice cream in this week's Walkabout segment. Hi, my name is Claudia Tarini. I am part of the group who put together the Chocolate Twist. The Chocolate Twist is an ice cream store that is solely owned by Boys and Girls Club of Rochester. When you come, we want you to offer the best quality ice cream we have, um, fabulous candy selection, all in an environment that is inviting and warm and invites you to hang out and, and strengthen the bonds of our community. So we sell ice cream. Our ice cream is uh, from Madison's The Chocolate Shop. It's considered quality ice cream, high premium, uh, high fat content, uh, award winning ice cream from the Midwest. We also have candy, all time candy, um, penny candy. We have a great selection of chocolate confections, um, truffles and chocolate covered potato chips and all delicious goodies like that. The chocolate covered potato chips, simply spectacular. Oh my god, the dark chocolate ones are just... We wanted to design this place with everybody in our community in mind, from young children to older adults. Uh, you, this is a place where you can come, sit down. We want a place that doesn't hurry you, that invites you to stay and linger. And that's why we have, for example, puzzles and board games. And on the back of the store, we have created a collaboration with the Minnesota Children's Museum Rochester, where they have something that we call pop-up play. We have giant games, a giant chessboard. Um, we have Connect Four, and all of these invite you to play and interact with one another. You don't have to necessarily know the other person who's here. We just want you to create community through play and through an inviting, warm environment. With elections coming up this year, community efforts underway to improve voter turnout and even provide some new ways to vote in local elections. This guy right here will be telling us what we need to know about ranked choice voting. Stay tuned. Our past, remembering what made us who we are today. Brought to you by the History Center of Olmsted County. Many famous people have visited Rochester, including Helen Keller. Keller, born in 1880, lost her vision and hearing at 18 months. 
While in Rochester, Keller spoke to classes at Central School and attended musical concerts at Dr. Donald and Carrie Balfour's home. To enjoy the music, Keller held her hands against the music room's pipe organ chamber screens. In 1937, Keller had gallbladder surgery. An infection delayed her recovery and she stayed for more than a month at the Kaler Hotel. A nurse was assigned to her full time. To show her appreciation for the nurse's dedication, Keller gifted a book about her teacher Ann Sullivan's life and personally addressed it. To Miss Hall, whose tender care made my nights restful. Helen Keller, October 11, 1937. A guest at Mayowood in 1939 and 1955, Keller gifted Dr. Chuck Mayo a personal photo, inscribing on it, To Chuck, whose darling kindness lingers in our remembrance. Ranked Choice Voting is an old concept that's been getting quite a little bit of attention lately. Steve Monk is here with us today to help us make sense of it all and what it could mean for local elections in Rochester. Welcome, Steve. Hello. Well, I'm going to start with the most basic question. What is Ranked Choice Voting? Well, Ranked Choice Voting is where when you go to vote in the booth, uh, you can rank a first choice, a second choice, and potentially a third choice or, or more. Um, and it allows the, uh, the results to be identify who has the majority of the support of the electorate. Um, if you like the concept of a majority winner, mm -hmm. uh, this is the way to go. Um, now, there's nothing wrong with our current system if you can guarantee that there's only two choices and then you have a clear majority winner, right? But uh, there are occasions where more people get into the race and uh, when then you can have winners that don't have a clear majority. That's a plurality, and big word. But um, uh, what we're really striving for is finding who has the majority. And ranked choice voting is a technique of resolving uh, the ballot count to find out which candidate has the majority. Simple as that. Great. So some some advocates of, of it, like yourself. Yeah. Um, what are some of the benefits of of having the system versus what we have now? Well, the clear benefit. First of all, is, is you find the, um, the majority winner um, every time. And is that foolproof? No, it's not. Okay. There, there are situations where we, th things you can have called an exhausted ballot, where people don't indicate a second or third choice, and their first choice gets eliminated in the first round, okay. and then they get put aside because they're exhausted. Um, there are no more choices. And so it is possible to have less than that 50% um, of the total ballots. Um, uh, what rank choice does in the instant runoff method is to always find the majority of the, in the final round, when the, you know, the, who has the majority of those ballots that are still in, uh, in play. So. And so if I'm looking at a ballot, what, what would that ballot look like to me if, I, if, if we end up adopting um, this type of voting? Well, currently you just have like one bubble down for each name. Uh, in rank choice, you would have uh, sort of a matrix of those little bubbles you can fill in. Um, one of them will be, one row or column will be identified as first choices, uh, second choice, mm -hmm. third choice, um, and so on. So the ballot can become a little larger in, in its size. Uh, and uh, so there's a little more to it, but um, we're hoping with just a little experience and education, um, and obviously when you go to vote, there are always election judges there to help you. Mm -hmm. uh, and the machines will identify any problems and the election judges can give you a clean ballot if you need one. Uh, so uh, there really shouldn't be a problem. Okay. And so this isn't a new, uh, as I mentioned before, it wasn't, it's not a new concept at all. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of, of, of this type of voting? Well, uh, ranked choice voting um, goes way back, uh, back to the 1700s. Uh, the Marquis of Condorcet uh, came up with a method different than we have that we're using in Minnesota. Um, it's called the Condorcet method. <laughs> um, he's a mathematician and, and uh, so it goes all the way back, way back hundreds of years. And uh, the method we're using in Minnesota, the instant runoff, goes in rounds mm -hmm. where the weakest candidate is eliminated. If you don't have a clear majority, the weakest candidate is eliminated and those ballots are then re redistributed to their next choice of the remaining candidates and 
uh, then you start all over again. Do so you would you vote again? Is that no, no, no. Okay. You, you only rank your stuff once. The, the process of resolving the, the, the vote is done by your, like your county right. officials. Mm -hmm. um, they've got the headache, not you. <laughs> so uh, you just show up one time. As a voter, you do the one time list and off then they one, go two, through three. that whole process of elimination and, and doing right. all of the yeah. reconciling. Yeah, so the process is done either uh, through an automated uh, machine process mm -hmm. or and it's done by your county election officials. Um, there's nothing, you know, uh, nefarious going on. You either trust your officials or you don't, mm -hmm. and that's the same for any election. Um, so the headache isn't isn't on the voter. It's at all. It, it's you know, it's the, the county clerk or the whoever uh, manages your elections. Sure. And so we have um, currently, I think it's uh, the Minneapolis um, mm -hmm. has a, a system, um, a ranked choice voting system mm -hmm. um, for local elections. What other, um, are there other models or other states that you're looking at um, as you're advocating for this year in Rochester? Oh, the, uh, the, the real, um, the trophy goes to the state of Maine. Okay. Uh, the whole state has chosen to use ranked choice voting. Um, and it was challenged and they just overcame that challenge. Um, they do have a problem with their state constitution uh, that does not allow them to vote using ranked choice voting uh, for state level offices right now. So they're currently using it for federal races. Okay. Uh, President, United States Congress, United States Senate, right, those kind of things. Uh, they need to make a small change to their state constitution uh, in order to use it for the entire statewide uh, races. And so the design of those ballots, are those standardized across across these different states and municipalities? No, it's not. Um, so would we be making up our own here in Rochester? Yes. Uh, okay. Some of the, some of the um, people who are not happy with ranked choice voting mm -hmm. um, say that's too complicated. Mm -hmm. And I would contend that this is largely an issue of ballot design. There are, there are rules to the layout of ballots and who gets listed first and in which order they get listed. Um, but the actual design can be very important uh, to a successful um, ballot, so that it's intuitive to people. Sure. And this, um, this fall, when we, we show up to, to vote in local elections, we're going to be voting about whether we want to have this type of voting. Is that... Is that in this in November? Uh, no. We, we were making a push with our petition to um, get it on the ballot. Okay. But what we found is that we spent so much time talking to, uh, on every doorway when we're getting signatures, we found out that people really didn't know much about it. And so I think we really needed to um, wait and do a more uh, education with the public uh, first. Sure. So um, what sorts of things are you, being in, are you involved with in terms of educating the public and raising awareness? About? Well, we need to find events, uh, like, the, like looking at your earlier segments about the Rochester flag. It would have been a great opportunity to have ranked choice voting, pick your favorite flag. So just to practice and what that even looks like. Just to like let people get experience with how it works and, and actually putting their choices, their first choice, second choice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but, you know, like in some, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, they do like these, uh, these craft beer contests, you know, pick your favorite beer kind of thing. Or uh, best of the worst up in the cities, they have a, a bratwurst competition. All these uh, artisan chefs make their best uh, bratwurst creation. Well, so hopefully if anyone's out there listening that yeah. has something coming up, maybe that So we, we, we don't know all the things happening in Rochester, uh, so we need, uh, we need to get the feelers out uh, to find out what kind of interesting potential there is to bring this forward uh, to the people of Rochester. So after that's done, you may be thinking about maybe the next year uh, trying yeah, to get we'll, that on we'll, the ballot. Yeah, we'll roll this out in two years, uh, back on the ballot. Um, or the city council could just put it on the ballot if we get more support. Um, so this election in November becomes very important for us. So are you working with an independent group or are you working through a larger organization that's sort of pushing ranked choice voting? Well, we're using uh, the expertise of Fair Vote Minnesota uh, to help us with a lot of it, the, because they've already done all this with Minneapolis and St. Paul and St. Louis Park, and they've uh, got a, a deep knowledge of the issues to be dealt with. And uh, so we're partnering with them to sort of advise us on how to, how to best uh, roll this out in Rochester. Sure. And this might be a little bit of a complicated question, but how would you know, I mean, in, in these other places where, um, where they've adopted it, and then if we do adopt it here, how would you know it's working? What does that success or um, that, that look like, that outcome look like? I think you just have to trust the process. Mm -hmm. uh, um, are people happy with their elected officials? Uh, is, how do you measure that? Uh, I don't know. 
do so are you, are you thinking about any ways to maybe measure that and sort of uh, well, a they do phase? they uh, they do exit polling mm -hmm. just to in the, in to see if people like the process mm -hmm. or if they find it easy. Uh, then there's the results of the election that get certified a few a few weeks later. Um, over, granted, ranked choice voting in the past has been kind of a slow rollout, and they've gotten much better. They can give next day results now, uh, not certified results, but um, it's always hard to know if. It, but it should be. Uh, well, we've got a few minutes, a few seconds left. So, yeah. um, is there any other a way that people can plug in? How can they learn more? Um, well, we'd like people to come to the county fair. Okay. We're going to have a booth. Uh, the county fair starts July 23rd. Okay. And uh, visit us, sign up, be a volunteer, get information. Uh, yeah. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Steve. Well, thank you. And thank you for joining us today. Hopefully, you'll be able to make it to the county fair to learn a little bit more about ranked choice voting. And uh, we will see you next time here from the University of Minnesota, Rochester. Our town is produced by KSMQ Public Television, nonprofit, non-commercial. Please help pay for this programming by making a personal contribution at ksmq.org. Thank you.